Hi, welcome back to the 10 minute series. Uh, today we're going to talk about understanding the cloud and understanding what is as a service because you hear software as a service, platform as a service, all these different types of services. So we're going to talk about what that means and hopefully make it make sense. Uh, this video is of course brought to you by me, Kelly Handerhan, and I'm the owner and founder of uh, Cybertrain.it and we teach a wide variety of courses throughout the globe. Uh, everything from the ISC Square courses, CompTIA, Project Management Professional, and I am a Microsoft Certified Trainer and have been so for a large number of years. So uh, if I can help you in any way in your studies, please feel free to send me an email at kellyh at cybertrain.it. All right, so let's talk about what this idea of as a service means because we hear it a lot and as the cloud continues uh, its dominance and takeover of the world you're going to continue to hear as a service. So let's talk about the way it used to be versus what we're seeing now. All right and we're going to think about this in terms of pizza. Pizza as a service. So my organization we make pizzas. All right, I have my own kitchen, I buy my own supplies, I hire my own workers to make the pizza. You know, every time there's a problem with the oven or with the facility or all anything that comes up is all my responsibility. I've just had three ovens go out in the last month and I've had to pay for new ones. It's expensive, it's cumbersome, and honestly, I'm just tired of dealing with it. So I want to look at some other options. I want pizza. That's not in question, but it's how much time, effort, and responsibility do I want to take on myself. All right, so one of the things that I, so I, I'm looking at some options, and I come across an option that says infrastructure as a service for making pizza. I think, well, that sounds interesting. What would that even mean? So I call up the facility, and they said, look, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you a place to make your pizza. We're going to give you a facility. We're going to give you ovens. We're going to give you a refrigerator. Uh, we'll provide gas to the building. You bring everything else in. You set up shop. You make your own pizzas. Now, I still have to buy the dough and the ingredients. I still have to um, cook the pizza. I still have to do all those pieces but I'm no longer responsible for the charge of the facility, the power bills, right? Heating and cooling. I'm not responsible if the oven explodes. Now, I am responsible if I leave the gas on all night, right? And there's a fire, or I am responsible for cooking the pizza well, right? That is, I gotta set the oven on the proper temperature. If I'm trying to cook a pizza at 900 degrees for half an hour, that's my problem, right? But as far as the day-to-day -day maintenance, the upkeep, all I got to do is come in and build my pizza. And that's a beautiful thing for me. That's a lot less responsibility. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm paying a hefty fee monthly for that. But it's not that upfront fee that you do when you're going into business. You can talk about capital expense versus operational expense. Capital expense is that big upfront, got to invest in a lot of equipment you're not going to see the immediate return on. Operating expenses are a little bit more palatable because, you know, usually often we pay them periodically and they're a lot smaller. So infrastructure as a service looks pretty good. And as a matter of fact, when I'm thinking about it as well, you know what, I don't even have to sell pizza. I've got a whole kitchen. You know, if I decide I want to make sandwiches or if I want to deliver, you know, maybe make Chinese food or whatever, I've got the kitchen. I'll do whatever I want with it. There are very few restrictions. I'm just kind of leasing out the kitchen. But that's still a lot of responsibility on me. Um, I know that I just want to make pizza. I know that I want, uh, you know, I just want a little bit less management. All I really want to do is show up and kind of put the pizza together. Okay. I want to um, keep looking so I find somebody that's offering platform as a service for pizza, uh, pizza manufacturing, if you will. So I call them and I say, well, what do I get with you guys? And they say, look, you get this entire setup that is designed for pizza. 
we're going to give you a place to put all your toppings. We're going to give you the dough. We're going to give you the little grate that it cooks on. We're going to give you all the equipment to make your pizza. You show up, you bring your toppings, and you can put any toppings you want, right? You can sell pizza with pepperoni, or you can sell pizza with clams and... I don't know where that came from. Don't put clams on pizza. That's just wrong. I'm sorry, New England folks. It's just wrong to put clams on pizza. That's another class, though. But you can bring in whatever toppings. You want cherry peppers. You want broccoli on pizza, which is also wrong. You can do whatever you want. But it does have to be pizza because we're just going to give you, we're going to give you the pizza dough. Here's what you can do. But you have this whole environment, and you can be as creative as you want with all the toppings. That sounds pretty good, but you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired, really, of making pizza. I'm tired of investing in the toppings. Sometimes you buy uh, 50 pounds of pepperoni, and you only use 20 pounds, and then 30 pounds of pepperoni goes bad. It's, I'm tired. So you know what? Let me just call and find software as a service for pizza. You know what you do with software as a service for pizza? You just call and order pizza whenever you want it, okay? That actually sounds really good because I have no responsibility, right? I just dial up the pizza delivery guy and say, I want a large pepperoni with uh, olives and, and onions. And he says, okay, here's your large pepperoni with olives and onions. Now, I don't get to customize that a lot, right? They give me a menu and I only have to work within that menu. So now I can't say, put clams on my pizza because I'm feeling crazy. They'll say, we don't have clams. You're not getting clams on your pizza. We don't have clams. Here's what you have. Pepperoni, sausage, mushrooms, onions, and green peppers. Choose with those. So I'm very limited in my flexibility, but I just show up and use the product and I go home. I'm done. So basically, when I'm choosing these ideas as a service, if we look at this from an IT perspective, traditionally, we've owned everything, right? I've owned the servers. I've owned the software. I've owned the routers and the switches and the network components. I've owned the software. I've had to install the software and patch the software and all of these things. So now... I want to see if the cloud can make my life easier. So I look into infrastructure as a service. When I go with infrastructure as a service, you know, Amazon Web Services would provide any of these, you know, certainly IaaS and platform as a service. An example of soft, well, an example of software as a service would be, you know, like Webmail and um, Microsoft Office 365. I'll get there in a second. But let's say that I'm interested in infrastructure as a service. All right, well, I don't want to have to have the facility to host 50 servers. I might need 50 servers today and one tomorrow. That's too expensive. That's a lot of money that I'm not going to get to uh, utilize fully, a lot of resources. I don't want to pay heating and cooling on my facility with 50 servers and all that network equipment. I want to be responsible if a switch goes bad. I just want to use a network, but I don't want to be responsible for it. So with uh, infrastructure as a service, basically what I'm doing is I am leasing virtual machines. I'm going to get a virtual hard drive, and I can install whatever I want on that hard drive. I have to make sure what I install has the appropriate security. I have to manage the, the configuration of the virtual hard drive. I manage uh, communication between my systems in that virtualized environment, but I'm not paying for the machines. I don't have ownership of the machines, all of those elements. I install the operating system, any sort of middleware, the data and the applications, but everything else is taken care of by the provider. They give me the virtualized systems. They have the servers and the storage facilities and the networking capabilities. I have um, a lot of flexibility in this environment, but I also have a lot of responsibility as well. Okay. Now then we move to platform as a service. Well, with platform as a service, I may have software developers and we need proprietary software. 
and I need somewhere to run the proprietary software, I need a database for that back end to store the proprietary software, I need the systems. What we want to do is we want to develop applications. Platform as a service is for us. Now, I can develop software and I can use the testing tools and all of the libraries and, and various tools that are necessary to build software, but I can only build software. That's what we're doing on platform as a service, right? Or I can just take advantage of software that's already out there. Office 365. Why do I want to design and implement a spreadsheet when I can use Office 365's Excel, for instance? You know, I've got Gmail or um, uh, Salesforce or any of those other applications. I just essentially create my users and handle their identity. I make sure that my data is stored in a secure location, but that's pretty much it for me. And really, I'm storing my data in the cloud as well. I kind of misspoke there because I'm storing my data in the cloud. They're making sure that the data itself is protected. Now, of course, I have responsibilities for the data as well, too. You know, I, I'm in process and all those pieces. But ultimately, what am I trading each step of the way? I'm trading in flexibility for outsourcing for ease of use. Let somebody else deal with it. So often you'll see all three of these incorporated in organization. You know, our platform exists or our software was created by platform as a service, which exists on infrastructure as a service. So it's not necessarily one or the other, but the bottom line, what drives me to choose one or the other or all of them is how much control, how much flexibility do I need and do I want? How much am I willing to turn over to my cloud service provider? All right, so you're going to continue to hear this idea of as a service. You'll hear disaster recovery as a service, identity management as a service. Those are discussions for other days. But I hope this analogy of understanding it in the world of pizza, because everybody understands pizza. I hope that this was helpful for you, and I hope that you continue to enjoy our 10-minute series.